So welcome everyone to Power School Special Programs Deep Dive. Uh, we are going to be covering administrative utilities today in the Alabama model. Um, specifically, we are going to cover uh, using demonstration steps and showing you how to click uh, to use the replace fields functionality uh, in the student utilities area. We're going to talk about how to deactivate and reactivate students. Uh, what do you do if somehow you get a duplicate student ID or you have two profiles for the same student? Uh, so merging and deleting a student profile. And then we're going to wrap up talking about and walking you through how to send and receive transfer envelopes. All right. All right, so I'm going to log into the demo database and then we'll flip we'll back and forth between the slide deck and, and the, real, the real world, so to speak. All right, so in Alabama, we're going to log in as the admin. And sign in. All right, so our focus today or this afternoon, we had a lot of focus today. Our, our focus this afternoon is specifically going to be up here in the area of utilities. And while there are utilities, data utilities that you can use for all of your associated profiles, we're going to focus on those utilities that are specific to students. Because I feel like those are the utilities that are, first of all, uh, more relevant uh, and would be those that you would, you know, might need to, to really have a reason for using. Within the area of the data utilities, notice that the focus defaults on students. And then beneath that, you will see a long laundry list. And if you remember from our previous sessions, we know what those are called now. Those are all your child student profiles. So you have your main student profile or your parent, and then all of the children beneath it. We're gonna focus on uh, just the area of students uh, and you should remember if you were with me um, just a few minutes ago in the reporting session that when we uh, think about the student profile, remember that's the entire set of those main profiles, the student demographic profile, the special education profile, the section 504, RTI, gifted state reporting. So it's those main profiles that we have access to get to uh, any of the uh, data that resides on those profiles. When I click the select utility here, um, I have uh, quite a few options. Uh, just so you know, uh, the first one we're gonna talk about, and, and let's kind of break it up this way. Uh, replace student fields uh, and then deactivate and reactivate have their own set of privileges in security. If you have access to student utilities, then you will see replace student fields, uh, deactivate, reactivate. Even if you're just a regular user in a regular security group that has that access. Uh, if you are logged in and want to be able to delete a profile or merge a profile, you have to be logged in with the admin account, okay? There are some utilities that are so powerful that only you logged in as an admin have the capability to use them. When we move into our discussion about transfer envelopes, 
those also have their own set of security privileges. So um, they're not associated with an admin account. They're associated with something called a transfer notification account. All right, so we're gonna start with talking about the very first one here, which is replace student fields. The replace student fields option is a mass update. That's exactly what it does. It allows you to select any field in the student's profiles and mass update it or replace it with another piece of data, okay? A consistent piece of data. Very powerful, right? So you really, really, really wanna be very cautious about using any kind of a replace field utility because you really could go out and cause some harm to your data. However, there are a couple of really good examples that I think it's useful for. And so I wanna walk through that functionality today because I think those are a really good example. First of all, let's talk about just in general how it works. When you select replace student fields or, or when you select any one of these utilities, by the way, uh, well, not any one of them, but re replace, deactivate, and reactivate the three that we're gonna talk about right now. When you select those, you always get uh, a formula area uh, because the first step in running any utility is to select who you want to do something to, right? I wanna replace fields, well, for who? There is a quick formula, there is a formula builder. Quick formula is very easy. It allows you to click on quick formula and then just using uh, these, the basic demographic page, go in and, for example, pick a grade level, pick a gender, that kind of thing. Uh, so it is, it's, it's pretty straightforward. My preference, uh, and maybe just because I'm used to, to, to more uh, programs that allow you to do uh, more ad hoc query building, I tend to really kind of like formula builder. The formula builder is equally as simple. You select, you pick your criteria by just clicking on the field. You can pick from a variety of conditions. For example, and once you add that filter, you could continue to add as many other options as you want. You can search by case manager, you could search by disability, you could search by uh, the location. I'm gonna accept that formula. So this is saying, who, who am I looking for? I'm looking for all my kiddos in grade four. And so let me kind of tell you what the end result I'm trying to uh, accomplish here. Um, one of the fields that I think uh, it can be very helpful to be able to mass update is your case manager field. And uh, so, so I wanna be really clear here, your case manager data is going to migrate over from sets. So whatever case manager assignment is on your kiddos when we migrate this summer is what's gonna be in special programs when your users sign on, okay? So fast forward, uh, or here's a situation that could exist. You go into production, you have all of your students assigned to a specific case manager that was here last year and they're ready to go. And all of a sudden you find out that that case manager uh, has left and you need to replace and move all their kids, right? Well, you know, this is a way that you can go and look for a particular assignment where the case manager is a particular person. And of course, you, could, you would be able to select, search, find that person's name. I'm gonna get rid of the first part of this because I don't really know that these kids are in fourth grade. 
There we go. And I could say, I want to replace the case manager. Every time I, I apologize for those of you who've been with me all day long, you know that my computer is running so slow. See, did I talk too long? It's very possible. Let's try this again. Get me logged in. Let's see, administration, administration, utilities. I might have just talked too long. Replace student fields. I want to write a formula that says I am looking for. My case manager. Where's case manager? It's on a special education page. I want to replace the case manager. There we go. I got it in. And here we go. I'm going to get a list of the students that were assigned to that case manager. I can come to my case manager field, look for another user. Sorry, it's cut off the top of my screen. Let me see if I can make that work. That's what happens when you have split monitors, people. I'm sorry. Here we go. All that just to get that little item right here. My lookup uh, screen cuts the top of it off on these dual monitors. So all I did was click look up and I looked up for the person that I want to uh, begin to assign these kids to. Now I can replace for all the kids. I can select all the kids. I could cherry pick the kids. And then I would have the capability to Replace only for the students that I checked. And now I've moved those kids over. So just to go back, replace student fields. How do you get there? How do you click to get there? You select administration utilities. You select data utility students. Remember I said it's defaulted. Under the utility area, you are going to select the utility that's called replace student fields. Here's just a small smattering of the fields that you can get to because you can get to every field that is a, a field in a student main profile. And there's a lot of them. And so you definitely don't want uh, your users out there mass updating information. You could mass update, you know, consent to evaluation dates on a special education page. So, you know, that's why we want to be really cautious about 
uh, first of all, giving this capability to a lot of people or even uh, you know, allowing a lot of users into the system until your final migration is done. Uh, use with caution, it cannot be undone. In this particular case, uh, you can see that I can search for you know, a first grader. I could select and search for a particular case manager. And so here I've given you the precise steps if you needed to do this. And remember, I said, be aware, they are already migrated. So you don't want to, uh, you don't need to assign anything in preparation for go live. You would not want to undo the migrated data when it gets here. But of course, there could be those situations where show me all my kids where the case manager is empty. Maybe I need to reassign uh, those. Uh, maybe I need to go in and uh, replace it, a particular one, in which case you would uh, select data utility students, replace student fields, use your formula, select your case manager, click continue, add in your new case manager. I always forget to do that because uh, it's this, it's the top of my screen and I don't see it and it's not a different color. Uh, so remember to assign your case manager cherry pick your kids, all or just a few, and go ahead and replace them. Uh, another example of how you might use uh, a replace fields that I think is a really good example is for a staff profile. And remember I said we probably wouldn't talk too much about uh, staff, but I'll just throw this out there. Um, since my machine is running so slow. Your staff profile information as all of your information comes over through integration. So if you started the day with me, you started hearing me say integration, integration, integration. Data that comes from PowerSchool Sys you don't want to change over on the special program side because if it doesn't match up and you change uh, the ID or the first name or the last name of something, it, it stops integrating. It doesn't match anymore. However, with, said, with that said, there's a, uh, I just want to draw to your attention. Uh, on the staff profile, there is a field. It's called position, and we are not able to integrate that from PowerSchool SIS. Uh, it is technically not. Uh, something we can do. Uh, and that is because the act, first of all, there's no real corresponding one-on-one uh, -on -one field in SIS that really holds that information. Uh, number two, their positions might look a little different than ours. Our positions are more special program related positions. And number three, PowerSchool SIS uh, doesn't allow us to uh, attach to uh, the field that contains uh, what they would consider their position information. So if you want data in the position field, you have to manually add the data in. And so in some cases, um, that is a field that a lot of districts like to mass update. Uh, and they can easily do that. They could uh, come in and just uh, do a uh, mass replace, looking for that field and cherry pick uh, all the different positions, all the, all the different staff in each building and say, oh, here's my special education teachers, and here's the couple of people that are the school psychologists, so forth and so on. So yes, can you manually do it? But you could also use mass replace if you wanted to, for example, mass assign a group of special education teachers. That's the replace field utility. Use with caution. Um, oh, another, here's another uh, 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 idea for it as well. Uh, the work phone. Uh, it, sometimes the work phone uh, number of a staff is printed on a document. And what they really want is just the uh, default phone number of the building. Well, you could select all your staff in your building and mass update the work phone to be the work phone that you want um, associated with the, all the staff in that building. So that's another um, idea. Okay, 
deactivate and reactivate student profiles. Your, when a student withdraws from CIS, um, they withdraw from CIS and they are exited from CIS and there would be uh, presumably an enrollment exit reason. Just because a student withdraws from CIS, there is no mechanism. And when I say there is, there is, there, I mean, there is no mechanism. I've had people say, well, can't we fix that? I'm like, no, well, there's nothing to fix. This is just the way it works. Um, there is no mechanism for uh, that student to automatically become inactive over in special programs. And to be honest with you, you might not really want that, um, even, even if that were possible. So um, the student withdraws, there are some exit reasons and the student stays active over in special programs and it doesn't hurt to have the student active. It has no bearing on enrollment. Uh, you know, there may be some bearing on, on, on some of the state uh, reports, uh, but those uh, are more than likely controlled more by a special ed exit date. Um, with that said, um, a student gets withdrawn and the student becomes um, inactive in CIS, but they still remain active in special programs. And you can, for example, keep them active until the end of the year. Uh, you can keep them active until somebody says, I'd like you to send me the transfer envelope on that. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but it is a manual process. And so for every student, you will see under the more button something called deactivate profile and it's real simple you click it, it says you want to do it we say yep. And now that student has been deactivated and they are inactive, you can still access them, you can access them by searching for an active students, you can come over to your home page and just type in. The student's name and you'll see that they're inactive. I'm looking for her and I can just very easily reactivate them. It's really just that simple. Deactivate, reactivate. So kind of a one on one kind of thing. There are also utilities that allow you to do that. Just like replace fields. So I could uh, mass deactivate student profiles in um, I think you know, it depends on the criteria uh, that you would enter to deactivate. Um, I would say that uh, maybe the best example might be a formula where you just simply uh, say you go to the formula builder and you select uh, from your special education page, uh, the special education exit date and you simply say, show me all my kids where the special education exit date is not empty. And maybe you're doing that at the end of the year as part of your end of year procedures. And what you're going to get is everyone who's left special ed. And you will be able to just mass deactivate it. Okay. Uh, I, I find that there's probably less reason to reactivate students uh, on, a, on a batch level than there might be to deactivate them. Uh, but that's an example of how you would use deactivate uh, using a utility looking for uh, special ed exit date is not empty or maybe you're looking for uh, graduation year is equal to a particular year and you want to uh, go ahead and deactivate all your graduating seniors now remember you can cherry pick so you can get an entire list and you can skip some of them uh, if you know for a fact that they didn't leave so Deactivate students. Here's your utility, fill in your formula builder uh, and continue. All right, merging profiles. This morning in integration, I don't know how many of you were with me this morning, um, but we talked about in our integration deep dive, uh, what happens when you get two records that somehow appear to be duplicates of each other and 
you begin to get row rejections in integration. And I said to you at the time, well, you can make a match, but you probably need to use some due diligence and you probably need to figure out what's going on before you go in and start merging and deleting, which is true. You, anybody who's worked in a student system as an administrator uh, of the system knows that before you start deleting things, you, you need to kind of take a look at what's going on. There's a utility that we have in special programs that allows you to merge two profiles. And that is a situation where you've got two kids that have the same name and different IDs. Okay. So here's a different example. What if you have two, two IDs and two people and one is called Bob Ackerman and one is called Robert Ackerman. And that's actually in my mind, that is the most realistic situation. You know, you somebody searched for Bob and they couldn't find Bob Ackerman because his record was under Robert Ackerman. And so they re-enrolled him or they gave him a new ID. And now there's two records. So here's what you need to know. If you have, if you figured out that you've got a situation where in the first situation, the names are the same and the IDs are different, then you can proceed. If you find that you have different IDs and maybe a part of the name is different, you need to go and make both records have the same name so the utility can match them, okay? I know that sounds crazy, but, but, but I'm gonna show you. Over here, I'm in students. I'm gonna go over. And merge. It wants to know who I want the idea of this of the target student to merge into. So I could type an ID, but what it's really looking for, and I'll go back and do it a different way. totally out. Administration, utilities, merge. I'm looking at, so I'm looking up Ackerman. So ID of the target student to merge into. So this is the target student. That's the good student. Here's my pick the one that I know is the correct student. It picks the correct student and it brings you up all of the matches with the same name. So if I'm looking for the other record, if, if, if the correct student is Robert, and I want to merge Bob into it, I'm gonna to have to make at least the first and last name match. That's the moral of the story, okay? So if they have different names, make them match or you won't be given an opportunity to uh, determine which is which. Okay, so now I can see my good Bob in third grade and I can see my bad Bobs. I'm happy to have a lot of them and I can see their birth dates. Uh, as far as the data that you're seeing, you're actually seeing the codes in the back end, which you know is a little not very friendly, um, but I would have expected if you're gonna do a merge profile, you would have already looked at those numbers and have a good idea of which one it is, right? Okay. So I'm going to pick 
the one that I know uh, is the source profile to merge into the target. So I'm going to take this data, which maybe was the historical data, and I'm going to merge it into the good data. And it's going to say, is this it? And it's going to tell you this person has three documents and six events. And there are 31 field differences. So within the profile itself, all of those differences. Now, remember what I said. If one is historical and one is new, you need to be cautious because for all of this data about uh, graduation year, graduation path, these are the ones where it's different. So you want to make sure that you're not taking historical data and overriding current data when you're doing the merge, right? So if I was, you know, kind of telling myself this story, I would say, never do this while you're talking to people. And in fact, I have stories about that from when I'm training and I'm showing people how to do things. This is the one thing that I say, I am not going to do this. You need to do this while no one's talking to you because it is very easy to make a mess. Okay? So you would pick the information that you wanted to keep if it was different. And then you merge profiles. Now, when you merge the profiles, the source profile is deleted. So you want to be cautious. Okay. Um, what that also means, and I think this is important to know, I haven't tested this uh, per se, but uh, I believe this to be the case. If you have data that is migrated over from sets, think of that as your historical data, right? There's going to be PDF documents into it. You want to keep your historical data as the target data. Very important. Keep your historical data as the target data. Merge your newest profile into the target and update any information very carefully that might have changed, as well as any live documents. What I don't want you to do is the reverse and then come back and say, oh, I lost the old ID number that was historic and I lost all his historic documents, okay? So be cautious, be careful, do some analysis. So first and last name might, should match. If you have an issue where, where you, you have some name changes, make a match so that you can grab both those profiles and do some analysis on them. You are going to uh, make sure you understand it is going to uh, merge the documents, the live documents, PDFs. I, I think that you, you don't want to lose those PDFs during a migration, so you want to be thoughtful about that. Uh, and you always want to merge into the historic document. Okay. I mean, as a general, that's just best practice when you're doing a migration or a data import. If you end up with two duplicate IDs, you always want to merge back into that historic ID, make it most current, delete the new one. And of course, it does, it automatically deletes the profile for you. Now, notice that I didn't really talk about uh, the ability to just delete a profile. Merging profiles does delete a profile. Um, it's pretty rare to delete a student profile. Uh, so I doubt very seriously that, that you, would, you would ever do that. Um, especially after, after migration. Uh, so 
it's one of the reasons I didn't include it in any of the documentation because if you have a requirement to delete a profile, uh, you definitely probably are going to be doing it as process as part of the merge process. Great. So the next thing we're going to talk about is transfer notification. Now, I'm going to start by going to your general ed student profile, which we've looked at a couple times today. And we remember that there is transfer information on the bottom. Okay. And that information uh, uh, is automatically coming, it's, it's integrating over from SIS. So there's some very special functionality uh, that is only in Alabama that, that has to do with transfers because it uh, was created to, to really mimic what we had in SIS. So a couple of things I'm going to do here. One, of, I'm going to bring up uh, the document that uh, your product uh, leader uh, just sent me yesterday. Uh, it, this is a relatively uh, new kind of thing, and it's only in Alabama. So um, um, we're going to have to kind of go by what Gail has told us on this. Um, First of all, if there is a, a functionality in our utilities that's called transfer envelopes. Okay. So when we talk about an alert for transfers, the alert for transfers is an alert that notifies particular individuals in a district that a student has transferred in or has transferred out, okay? That's the first thing. And that's the very specific Alabama part of it. And it works in conjunction with this information on your general ed profile, okay? And, it, and um, when that information, when this particular student is imported into uh, the student table, then it shoots off an alert message, which is really, it's called a transfer alert, but it's a message. It's not an alert in terms of like a little triangle alert. Yeah. <laughs> Can you say that one more time about the Alabama transfers alert? I, I will, I'll say it various times because it's still a little bit confusing to me. Okay. There, let me, let me back up here. There is a special functionality that is for Alabama. Okay, so this does not exist anywhere else. So uh, it, it's a little bit different. In Alabama, in your general ed student profile, if a student has left the district, has transferred out and gone to a different district, this information is included in his general ed profile, okay? Well, that student is in your general ed table, so it's not really important. You don't need to know that he's transferred unless you're bringing him into your student table, right? Okay, so if he's in your student table, let me back up and show it to you this way. If it's a new person and he's transferred or, he, or he's transferred in, when you import into your student table, it is going to send the users who are part of the notification security group a message in their communication area that says you have a new student that's transferred in from XYZ district. If you have a student that is in your student table, he's receiving services and he transfers out, then you'll also receive, then that a person who is part of the notification security group will receive a message that they've transferred out. 
And so when we talk about transfer alerts, it is a message. It's a message that will appear in your message center as an unread message, okay? So when I'm talking about alerts, I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about that. And I need to, I need to discuss this a little bit with Gail because uh, for me, when you, when you tell me there's an alert, I think, oh, there's an alert out here that says you've transferred. And that's not, and that's what I thought she meant forever until she sent me the documentation. And she says, no, it's an alert. Well, to me, that's a message. Okay. So I just want to be really clear for you. When I talk about transfer alerts, they're messages that are sent to a user who has been added to or is part of a transfer notification security group. Okay. Right, so that's why, and I think this is gonna confuse people. So like Lynette said, when you say alert, will we get an alert or will we have to ask for the transfer? Okay, you're right. It's not, it, it is an alert, but it's a message alert. Okay, it's a message alert that tells you that you need to go to utilities and request a transfer envelope or send a transfer envelope. So the alert process or the message process is an automated process that sends you messages and gives you a report about where these kids go. And I have to apologize, I can't show it to you live yet because I don't have two districts I can actually do this in. Uh, I will uh, see if I can work with Gail and, and we'll, we'll see if we can do a little video uh, using some of the pilots. We have to be really careful because we've got live data, right? Uh, so we're gonna have to uh, try and do it through a sim simulation. And they're also just um, installing some fixes and nuances to this, I think uh, on Friday, that'll roll out. So uh, this won't be the last you hear about it. So, okay, so uh, so you get, a, you get a message and I'll go back to her, her um, yeah. So you get a transfer alert message and and it's in your message area. I don't know if you can see that. It's, it's a message, transfer student notification. It, it's a service generated message that says, the student Eddie has transferred in from the banana school of the fruit district and appears to be participating in at least one special program. Records can be transferred in using the special programs transfer feature, okay. It's not automatic. You don't get this message that just sends you all the stuff yet. It's a multi-part process. This is just to tell you. Same thing for the student demographic. So whether it's a general table or on the student demographic, they're both the same. If when the student is imported, it will enter a check in the in-state transfer yes and enter the name of the transferred from district. There will also be some a general report that you can subscribe to that sits on your desktop. So remember, we didn't talk about subscribing yesterday, but if I were you and I was the admin, uh, as soon as this uh, general, this, this transfer uh, report gets completed, uh, she's, they're making a few changes to it. I would go out and I would publish it to uh, you know, the people that I knew needed to see it. So they didn't have to go back in here and look for it. I published it out on their desktop. And you guys learned how to do that today. Okay, so that's the part that's just the messaging part. You get a message that says they've transferred in, you can go grab their stuff. Now, this is what it looks like over here on this side. Over in utilities, that person 
you know, just keep in mind, we've got, you're going to have to designate uh, responsibility to specific users who can, uh, who are responsible for being able to use the transfer utility functionality. So we're going to start with receive student transfer envelope. Couple of things here. If you just received a new student in and the district, let's say Birmingham was really on the ball and they knew that uh, their kiddo was moving from Birmingham to mobile they could already have a transfer package sitting there waiting for you. Pretty slim pickings, I bet. So what you can do is you can request the envelope. And from here, you can pick the school district. So let's try that, Birmingham, okay. Every time I click, There we go. This is going to send this to the receiving person in Birmingham that's responsible for notifications, okay? So there will be uh, a user that each district needs to designate that says, here's our person that's kind of responsible for the transfer notification process. And you're going to send a notice that said, we just got, you know, Bob Ackerman. And I'm going to request this envelope. And that, quite frankly, just went to Birmingham. You're probably wondering what to do with that now, that they're not in their system. So that's okay. And away you go. And so every user is going to set a receiving user which is, you know, it can only be one person, but if you have one specific person, uh, either the admin person here would be the second one, and one other person that would be the designated kind of in charge of transfer envelopes. That message you just sent to Birmingham is going to appear in their unread message, just like that. Look, I got a, I got a message. Somebody requested a transfer envelope for a particular student. And I would know too, oh yeah, that kid left. I would come up to administration, go to utilities, go to send a transfer envelope. I would pick my kid. I want to send Bob's records. And I would create a student transfer envelope. It would ask you, is this the right kiddo? and I would generate it. And when I generate it, it is going to say, and, rem and remember, when I'm generating this, if I'm sending it to Alabama, then I'm using the same software, right? They are in special programs. They have a student demographics. They have a special education profile. Now, it wants to know, when I do this, do you want me to send all the data that's in the student demographics? I would say probably not because your student demographic data may be dramatically different than what's over in Birmingham because they moved to Birmingham. They have a different address and for sure they're gonna have a different student ID. The special education. So the question here is if you send the special education profile you are going to send to Birmingham all of the compliance, the graduation year, all of that data that you've been reporting to the state also goes with him in that special education profile. I would say that's a win-win, right? And then 
here's all of his documents that you're going to import out or send to them as live documents. And they're only finals, so that would be appropriate. You could send them a draft if you wanted, and you could cherry pick which ones that might be. I don't know under what circumstances you, you know, send a draft to another district. And then you generate the student package. And there it is. It's a zip. One way to look at it is in that zip file or up here, this is where, you, where do you want to send it? And you have two options. Now, if it's in-state, if it's an in-district, if it's an in-state transfer, definitely you are sending it to a school district hosted. And these are all of your Alabama districts. And you only have the choice of Alabama. And why is that? Because there's, you can't send it to another district as a live document that doesn't use your forms, okay? So I'm gonna send it over to uh, the training site, we'll just use that. And then if it's you, if you're, so you're sending it over to Birmingham and Birmingham's gonna get a message that says uh, in, in special programs, in their message area, uh, Alabama model, so that would be your school district. Mobile has sent you a student transfer envelope containing one student. To access it, go to administration utilities, click receive student transfer envelope, and it will unzip it and it'll install it directly into that student's record, okay? And I'll show you that. Your access to the envelope will expire after 331. So, access to get to that transfer envelope and to install it in your environment will expire in seven days if they don't go grab it. Now, if I'm gonna back up, let's go back to utilities just to, so I can add a few things to this. Here's all of your transfer envelopes that you sent. You can see where it's where it has expired in this particular case. So for these, I haven't really sent them, but these are all the ones that I've sent. If they don't go grab it, I can extend the expiration date. You know, if they call me up and say, oh, I'm sorry, I just saw this and I need you to extend it, you can extend it or you can recall it, do it again, delete the envelope kind of thing, okay? So you can extend it. All right, so that's how to send a transfer envelope in the state of Alabama. What if they're not in Alabama? What if you have someone that goes to Mississippi? and they're requesting a transfer package uh, that would have the historical documentation uh, on your kids. Don't know what your policy is, but you can send via email a zip file. And the zip file and the security code to open that zip file are sent in separate emails. So I can send it, I can say, I'm sending you a transfer envelope. You will need a separate security code from the sender and it expires in seven days. And then you have to convey this code either by a separate email or calling them up and saying, I just sent this to you, you're gonna need this code. So it's, think of it as multi-factor authentication. That's exactly what we're doing here. We're just making sure that we're sending it to the right people and not just anybody could go to that email and open up all those confidential documents. Okay, now, 
Let's go back. And we'll pretend that I have a message there that said, oh, we, you know, we just sent you a transfer envelope. In which case you'd say, oh, okay, utilities, receive, upload, and whatever file they gave me, and I don't even think I have anything out here. And I would upload it. Uh, actually, I think if it was a real, I, I could upload things that way, by the way, but I think if it was a real file, um, and I can't see because I don't have a package that was sent to me. Um, when I uh, upload the student plans, it asks me what student ID number I want to import it into, okay? And I don't think I, I have, I can even show you that. I can try to fake it, but I don't think it'll work. Oh, it does, invalid file. Import student transfer data package. You type the student ID number, it'll pop up with the name. I would expect that you've matched the name just to make sure that it was correct. Okay, so to review, each district is going to, in addition to, they're gonna, they're gonna add a, a user, one or more than one user to the transfer notification group as a supplemental group. We talked about that if you were in my security group in my security session, right? So it might be uh, the special ed director, it might be a coordinator. The important thing to know is that uh, this transfer notification process gives users system-wide access. You have to have system-wide access, uh, not only to all of the students in your district to work with transfer envelopes, but to be able to grab their transfer envelopes and send them and receive them. So we've set up this group and you could have a user that's part of another group, but this is also the supplemental group that they have um, rights to be in. And if they're a member of this group, they will get those transfer notification messages. What they're calling alerts is a message. You have a, you have a message that someone is transferring in and you need to go send a package out or receive a package in. To send one, you go to utilities. Student, send transfer envelopes. You click look up and you select the student that you want to create the transfer envelope for and you click create transfer envelope. So you're creating the transfer envelope. It generates the student packages. When you open up that package, it says, what do you want to include? Now, I would tell you to turn off the student demographics. I would think uh, you would want to send the special education. And now if it's a section, if, it, if it's some other kind of program area, I just don't have any screenshots of that. You know, it might be you're sending the section 504 or the section RTI. So, you know, those are decisions which you can control. I would think that you would want to send uh, some of this information as well as all the documents. And you would generate that package. You'd send that envelope to either an Alabama district or uh, an email uh, uh, contact, uh, and you would have to provide the alternate access 
codes in a separate email or separate communication. All right, questions. I know that wasn't as seamless, but I really uh, uh, can't, I can't quite show you the alert message yet from them because I don't, uh, don't have it in a live integrating environment, so. So, yeah, nobody sent me a message um, as you're thinking about this. So, um, of course, as all, with all our sessions, uh, you know, we have about an hour of presentation and then we open it up for the last half hour for you to do some exploring on your own uh, and we hang out with you. I'm gonna hang out with you if you have any questions or if you're trying to walk through something uh, and you have a specific question, uh, shout out. Uh, literally, you can send me a chat. Um, the thing about uh, this part of the session, and I am going to uh, 